Hi, I'm Anna Morris, lead environmental educator at the Vermont Institute of Natural Science. I've been getting out for more rocks around my neighborhood recently and back up into the woods behind my house, and you probably have too. And I wanted to share with you one of my favorite tools for making those walks all the more interesting and fun. It's an app that's free to use called iNaturalist. iNaturalist is a way to help you learn more about the wildlife that's in your area and at the same time help scientists document the abundance and distribution of wildlife species all around the world. Created by the California Academy of Sciences, iNaturalist has amassed hundreds of millions of observations from like-minded individuals who are curious about the fern growing in the woods in their backyard, the birds singing in the tree above their head, or even the grass growing between the cracks in the sidewalk right in front of their city apartment. So come with me on a journey to learn more about what iNaturalist is and how you can use it at home right now. You can download iNaturalist from wherever you get your apps. As I mentioned before, it's completely free to download and used. It's spelled naturalist with a little i on the front just like in iPod or iPad. Let's take a look at the app itself. The logo is this little green flying bird on a white background. And when I open up the app, it'll show me all of my previous observations that I've made using this app. I live in Vermont, so it's got a lot of Vermont located wildlife, but a few weeks back I went on a trip to Arizona and it's got some Arizona wildlife in there too. You can see my observations. I've made 551 observations using the app of 320 different species and I've helped with the identification of 54 different observations that other people made. So in order to make an observation today, let's go outside and find something neat to observe. Here, for example, is a group of wood ferns. Now, I know that these guys are wood ferns because I've met some wood ferns before and iNaturalist helped me identify them, but I'm gonna make an observation of these anyway. So I'm gonna open up the app on my phone and it will show me a list of all of my previous observations. And then in the lower right-hand corner, there's a green circle with a plus sign in it. Now, if I hit that, that will add an observation. Now, it's gonna ask me if I want to take a photo or choose a photo from one that's already stored on my phone. So I'm gonna take a photo of these ferns. All right, so now we have our fern photo loaded in to the app. And you'll notice it's got a couple of different uh, conditions alongside of our observation because just the photo itself isn't really useful to scientists and it's not going to be useful to you later either. So we need to know a little bit more about this photo. So it's asking us, what did you see? View suggestions. Now I mentioned I knew it was a wood fern. So I'm going to type in here into the species search bar, wood ferns. Wood fern, genus Dryopteris. And I'll select that one and say yes. Yep, yep, that does look exactly like what I was looking at myself. I'll select this one so that we know now what the observation is of. I can add any notes that I want to it. And the neat thing about the app is that it fills in the date and time that you took the photo for you. So it, today is March 31st, it's 4.28 p.m. And also, if you have your location services turned on on your phone, we'll fill in the location for you. This is the Vinge Nature Center. If you don't have location services turned on on your phone, you can select this row and maneuver the map to point out exactly where it is you made that observation. And I'm just hitting the back button to get back to where I was. The location visibility here, that's just a privacy option. So if you don't want the location of this observation to be visible to just anyone who uses the iNaturalist uh, app, you can make that visibility closed or private. That way, only scientists who are interested in the data uh, associated with the species observation will be able to ask permission to download it. Is it captive or cultivated is the next row here. And if you came to Vins and took a picture of our snowy owl in her beautiful enclosure, you would have to flag that picture as captive because she is not uh, currently living in the wild as a snowy owl and you can't cite her as a wild observation. But you can still put her on iNaturalist, you just have to say she is captive. Uh, cultivated, referring to plants, of course. If you take a picture of the irises in your garden that you planted in the fall, you should probably flag them as cultivated as well. And then this projects button down here, if you would like to subscribe to the Vince project, 
we do have one. It's called the VINS Campus Index, and it just helps us keep track of all of the observations that are made on site at the Nature Center. Another good project to be a part of is the Vermont Atlas of Life. This is run and stewarded by the Vermont Center for Eco Studies, and they keep track of all the observations of plant and animal life in Vermont. It's a really, really cool one to be a part of. I'm not going to add it to a project right now. And then when I'm done and satisfied with all the elements of this observation, I'm just going to hit this little check mark up here and it will save my observation. Now let's just say in that hypothetical scenario where you don't know what it is that you've observed, you can still upload it to iNaturalist and hopefully someone will be able to come along and identify it for you. But iNaturalist has this really neat AI that will actually do some of the work for you. So I took this picture earlier this afternoon of this bird. I didn't know what it was. It was just right there in front of me on a perch in an aviary. And I'm gonna say, what did you see? And instead of trying to type in what I think it was that I saw, cause I, I don't know what this is. It's a blurry photo. It's going to make suggestions and it's actually pretty good. This is our American Kestrel, Moncton. He's our newest education ambassador. And I was doing a little work with him earlier today and snapped a photo. And iNaturalist's AI is telling me that we're pretty sure this is a falcon, genus Falco, which contains the typical falcons or the over 60 species of falcons that exist in the world. And below that, it lists their top 10 suggestions, the first of which being the American Kestrel. So it got it right on the first guess. Right underneath that is the Eurasian Kestrel, which you'll see it said visually similar, but it is not seen nearby the way that the American Kestrel is. So we can probably safely assume, at the very least, that this is a falcon. But again, if you choose wrong or the AI suggests something that is wrong, there's a human component to iNaturalist that will come through and make sure you're making exactly the right observation. You can also use iNaturalist on a laptop or a computer. The uh, browser image will show you all the observations that are made in a particular area of the world. And you can upload your observations on here from a camera's SD card the same way you would do with the app. But the really fun thing about looking at this on the computer is you can observe uh, what other people are seeing in your area or see the distribution of a particular species that you might be interested in. So let's kind of try that. Um, what should we search for? Let's say a snowy owl. So I am in the explore tab, logged into my account on iNaturalist, showing me observations from all over the world and I'm searching for the species snowy owl. I didn't put in a particular location, but it's showing me that there are 2,900 observations of snowy owls logged onto iNaturalist. And many of them are of course uh, right here in North America. Let's see how many observations there have been of snowy owls in Vermont. So I'm just adding Vermont to the location part of the search. 257 observations of snowy owls in Vermont. But let's say, you know, this is all observations of snowy owls ever. There are even further filters that you can use. You can filter what observations you're looking for by the date. Let's say you're interested to see how many snowy owls were seen in Vermont in 2015 versus in 2011, something like that. And you can search for much broader categories. Let's say you're interested in knowing about all the different species of ferns that exist in Vermont. You can search for the larger group ferns and see the various different species that people have observed. Now is a great opportunity to become a citizen scientist, to learn more about how to use iNaturalist and get learning when you're outdoors.